Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're looking at the recently released Anthem and seeing how it compares to its initial 2017 E3 gameplay debut. For this video, I'll be running Anthem on the PC with an RTX 2080 Ti, an i7-8700K processor, and 32GB of RAM. All the game's graphical settings are running at the highest options, but I will be disabling the motion blur setting to provide more clear images. Also, bear in mind that the footage on the left will appear blurrier because of both motion blur and the YouTube compression. And to help keep this organized and simple to follow, I'm just going to run straight through the original E3 reveal and compare everything one scene at a time, putting out things like lighting, textures, and most of all, changes made to the game world, which there's quite a few of. So let's jump right into it with our introductory sequence at Fort Tarsus. In the E3 demo, the player reaches out and pulls a red cloth out of the way to unveil a bustling market scene with several NPCs and impressive display of lighting and shadows. In the final retail version, there is no cloth doorway, and instead, a large wooden door is used to access the same area. The bazaar has had its number of NPCs reduced substantially, and their animations have been simplified as well. The various smaller objects around this market have also been removed, including many of the extra cables, baskets, and bowls that help to enhance the scene and the overall size of the market has also been reduced. The lighting has also been downgraded by a large margin, with much less bloom, weaker global illumination, and less volumetric light. The gigantic looming strider that stomps into the scene in the E3 demo is now completely stationary in the final retail game. And the cloth simulation from the various stalls in the bazaar has been reduced, with the edges of the cloth not moving nearly as much as before. The scene feels less cinematic, and far less impressive as a result. As the player moves down the busy street, a character walks out from between the stands and begins talking to the player. Not only do NPCs not act this dynamically in the final game, but this character Paxley does not exist at all in the retail. In fact, his mission, Hell or High Water, which is used throughout this E3 demonstration, does not exist. It's likely this mission was created early on to help showcase what this game was all about, but it was removed after the full narrative and open world had been properly developed. In the retail game, players will communicate with multiple NPCs in this area, and accept various contracts before going into the open world environment. Characters require you to approach them, and won't move around the environment like what was suggested in 2017, removing a bit of that dynamic feel that the reveal had. After accepting the mission, the player then moves to the Javelin platform. There's been a few changes to this area as well. First, the platform has been rotated slightly, making the stairs appear in line with the bazaar's main walkway. There's a few more NPCs working in the final retail version, but instead of operating on actual javelins, they're just repairing the stations themselves. The engineer that works on your javelin has also been changed. Originally, this character was wearing overalls with a headlamp and short hair, and despite not saying anything for the brief time she's on screen, she seemed to have more personality than what we ended up with. The final model looks fine and has some incredible detail, but the outfit design feels far less inspired and comes off as generic. Alright, so now we have the javelin itself. Bear in mind that because the platform is rotated slightly, the ranger javelin is not in the exact same position, so the lighting is a bit different. But I think it's safe to say that the lighting in the E3 demo is just superior in the shot. The darker background helps to set the foreground apart and draws focus more appropriately than the final retail version. As for the textures and javelin design, they're pretty darn close. In fact, some of the textures as the player climbs into the suit are identical only that they appear more crisp and higher res in the final retail version. Now that the player is in the javelin, a sequence plays out with the player slowly emerging from the fort in their new suit, which was likely used as a transitionary sequence as the game loaded. However, the final retail version does not feature the sequence, and instead gives the player a menu with options for which mission they'd like to play and if they'd like to invite friends to join them. After confirming their selection, the game then shifts to a standard loading screen and cuts to the javelin smashing into the ground at whichever checkpoint that the player chose. Here, we finally get to see the outdoor environment, and just how much it has been reduced in scope for the final version of the game. Don't get me wrong, the final retail version still looks gorgeous in pretty much every aspect, but there's no doubt at all that the game was initially going to be far more ambitious. In fact, you can see just how ambitious based on the fake backdrop that they used as a placeholder for their open world. The valley below shows a river that would likely have taken a few minutes to reach had it existed in the final game. Unfortunately, the valley has had its distances reduced by a large margin, with this river appearing much closer, and the overall draw distance has been scaled back considerably. The design of the environment has changed a great deal, with the large mesa to the right now appearing much closer and no longer featuring its multiple waterfalls. Even small details like the waving flags on the platform have also been removed. 
For lighting, I tried my best to match up the time of day by waiting for the sun to move into approximately the same position as the demo, but they still look very different, with much less global illumination and accurate volumetric lighting in the final retail version. As the player jumps off the cliff, you can more clearly see the massive valley below. The final game, however, shows the true scope of the open world, with large cliff sides, trees, and waterfalls, with lots of vertical gameplay opportunities. The tunnel that the player flies through on the left has been reduced in size, and the herd of stampeding animals are no longer present. The large, dense jungle area has also been changed, almost to the point where I didn't recognize where I was when I started playing. I eventually found a familiar landmark, this broken stone arch, and it became immediately clear what had happened to the environment that they had created. A ton of the trees have been removed, in addition to various ferns, shrubs, grass, and broken tree trunks. The area itself looks barren now, and the encounter with a large monster near the ruins no longer happens. It appears that a lot of the more dynamic encounters with creatures and characters have been removed, with special animations like this one no longer occurring in the more open-ended parts of the experience. After this encounter with the large creature, the player then jets off along a river and runs into a random encounter with a group of scars near the stone archway. I've never run into scars near this archway in the final game, but instead, I occasionally ran into these larger insect-like enemies instead. From here, the player dives under the water, revealing a large crevice and a bit of sea life. This still occurs the same way in the final game, though the coloration has changed slightly, and the depth of field effect has been reduced to make distant objects underwater more visible. As the player begins to emerge, you can see bullets whizzing by in the water, and again, I'm not sure if this still happens because I was never able to get scar enemies to spawn along the side of this river. But what I did notice is that the reflective surfaces no longer properly reflect light from player-made explosions and various gunshots. I tried multiple explosives on these enemies in approximately the same location, but never once managed to replicate the reflective properties of the water in the E3 demo. After the fight, the player looks off to the left at a cave that they plan on exploring later. This cave doesn't feature the same blue glow, but is otherwise mostly the same. Again, you'll notice significantly less vegetation here and lower quality lighting, but the general layout is still very similar. Finally, we get to the main mission objective, where a large strider walks into the valley and collapses with an impressive explosion. Unfortunately, in the final game, since this mission no longer exists, the strider just stands here and does nothing. It's possible this sequence happens during a different mission later in the game, but I haven't found anything similar up to this point and the fact remains that the original mission that featured this event has been removed. I also found another group of enemies and tested the explosive payloads on them to see how they compared visually, but unfortunately, these also look a bit less impressive. There's a nice amount of particle effects associated with them, and it still looks really cool, but the original E3 demo did feature more realistic smoke effects and fireballs. Overall, I'm pretty disappointed with the overwhelming amount of downgrades that have occurred since the 2017 debut. The game's dynamic nature has been stripped away, with random encounters with alien monsters feeling less organic to the experience, and the amount of detail to every environment has been reduced by a great deal. But at the same time, what's left over is not a bad looking game. In fact, Anthem is probably one of the better looking games to come out of this console generation. The character models look incredible, the lighting while scaled down still looks great, and the lush jungle environments mixed with its unique sci-fi setting really help to create a beautiful presentation. But what do you guys think? Were the downgrades too much, or do you think Anthem still looks pretty good? Let me know in the comment section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.